Okay, Chuck Cameron here with our community access. Today, we're on Ray Road. Meyer is right over that hill. M24 is right there, and our high school is down there. Behind me is a gravel pit. Most of us have driven by here a thousand times. We're gonna go inside today and figure out what goes on at the Ray Road sand and gravel operations of Levy Industries. Stay tuned, we think you're gonna find what we have to say and what they have to say a pretty good story. Hi, I'm Ruben Maxbauer. I am the operations manager for the Edward C. Levy Company, and I want to welcome you to Ray Road Sand and Gravel here in Oxford, Michigan. Okay, so Ruben, we're we're outside here on a beautiful day in beautiful Oxford, which is. It's almost always beautiful, except that it's, it's always it's beautiful. Yeah. It's always beautiful. So what's going on here? We're, we're at a gravel pit, which has a more elegant name, but what's going on here? It's a good question. Well, before I explain what's going on, first, I want to welcome you. Thank you. We're always happy to have visitors here. We love, as you'll, you, you'll soon find out, we love what we do. We love having visitors, uh, and we could talk about what we do all day long. You know, like you, I'm sure, when I was a kid, I used to play in the sandbox and I would have my Tonka truck and my front end loader. And uh, in my wildest dreams, I could not have hoped uh, that I'd be able to do that for a living, that someone's willing to pay me to do it. So, now, so you've come to the right place. That's what we do here. Now you are one. That's right. That's right. It's amazing. Yeah, so, so welcome. So, so yeah. back to your question. Yeah. Uh, what we do here is uh, we uh, dig and process sand and gravel for the construction market. So what that means and what that looks like uh, is we have big wheeled loaders, big front end loaders uh, that'll dig into uh, banks of material. They dig into the earth uh, from deposits that were placed here from the glaciers uh, and, and they'll put that material into our processing plants. And there's a series of feeders and screens and conveyors and crushers. And the objective ultimately is to make a high specification quality product that can go into an MDOT uh, project anywhere in the state. The majority of our products are sold into Southeast Michigan construction. So uh, uh, a road like I-75 or 24 or 696 or what have you. Uh, but, but our products meet MDOT specifications. They can go into any MDOT project as well as any commercial project uh, anywhere in the state. In addition to the wheeled loaders that are digging uh, material from what we call a dry bank or a high wall and putting that material into our processing plant, we also have a floating dredge, uh, which, uh, which you'll see a little bit later, and that can dig underwater. So there's a big bucket called a clamshell, and it kind of goes down, it scoops material up, and it pulls that material up from underwater. Uh, so we've created some lakes here doing that. Uh, and, and that's another way we get material into our processing plants so we can in turn make our finished product, which again goes into construction. We see a sign levy and we see a sign American aggregates. What's the, what's the connection there? Yeah, it's a great question. We get asked this one a lot because there is some confusion. So, so the Edward C. Levy Company uh, was founded in 1918. Detroit, Michigan, and it was founded uh, with with its purpose at the time was uh, supporting the supporting Henry Ford as he was building the Rouge plant. Sure. So, yeah. so Levy started as a trucking company, uh, hauling materials in and out and around uh, the the Ford Rouge plant. Throughout the years, we've we've grown both or, both organically as well as through acquisition. Uh, and Levy bought American Aggregates in the '90s, uh, so so it's still called American Aggregates. It's still Ray Road uh, Sand and Gravel that's part of American Aggregates. But but the Edward C. Levy Company is the parent company of American Aggregates. That makes it clear. So the sign will probably say American Aggregates for a good long while. Absolutely. And somewhere in the corner, you'll likely see it I, says Levy. I wouldn't doubt that. Just small print. Yep. So why then, if you can? dig it out of the side of the hill, 
why then do you need to go and dredge down into deeper and deeper into the ground? What's what's the purpose of that? That's a great question. That's a great question. So there's two primary reasons. Number one, when we start with any one of our mining operations, we start with the end in sight. So we want to understand what our property will be used for once we've uh, mined the property and taken uh, the the minerals out. Uh, so. For this particular property, uh, we it was important to develop some lakes because there will be residential development here, and uh, and everyone wants to live on. A, I can tell you, I want to live on a lake. Everyone wants to live on a lake. Uh, it seems so. So with the end in sight, it was important uh, that we that we make some some water bodies on the property. That's number one. Number two, Oxford is blessed uh, with with tremendously rich reserves. Uh, of sand and gravel, and those reserves are both above the water table and below. Uh, and given the needs uh, in the state of Michigan, in particular, we all know what the state of our roads are like. We need lots of construction aggregates to fix our roads, uh, so it's important that we're grabbing the aggregates, the quality aggregates that we can safely and efficiently obtain, uh, whether they're above water or below water, so we can process them. I can appreciate your comment about the lakes. We are living about a mile and a half from here on and a lake that used to be a gravel pit. So it's uh, makes for it's good living. Great that your company is thinking about the future and not just the current, you know, economic benefits of digging dirt. That's right. We we typically see that the that the property after we've mined is worth as much, if not more, than the reserves that we've taken out uh, from the ground. So so. Uh, while we're mining, uh, we're able to, to, to turn a little bit of a profit, and then at the end of the day, we want to be able to sell the property uh, so we can go and buy our next operation and do it all over again. Hi, I'm Rod Veslowski, uh, Area Manager for American Aggregates. Rodney and I are together here outside. We're going to take a tour and we're going to see some of the things that make this place amazing. So, Rodney, can you give us a, a ride around? Yes, I will. Thank you, brother. Hop in? Yep. Thank you. Safety starts every morning, even as our employees arrive here. Um, we all back in parking, all equipment, personal vehicles, company vehicles. Um, employees are more apt to uh, back in safely than when they're leaving at the end of the shift. Well, safety's our, our number one goal here. Uh, that's that's our priority. That's, that's far most important in front of everything. So um, second part is, is we bring in a drilling our drilling team and they'll identify uh, an area that we think we're going to move into next. They'll drill holes, they pull samples up. We have a QC lab that will test it and let us know what the product is, how the gravel looks. Um, and from there, we advise a plan of, of how much cover is on it, meaning clays or topsoil that we have to remove to get down to something that's processable for our plants. Um, and from there we develop, we decide how many tons that will entail or how many tons we're looking for for the following year for, for customer needs and how much we need to strip to be ready for them so that we can process it. Hi, I'm Stacy Weir and I'm Quality Patrol for the Edwards Hill Levy Company here at Ray Road Sand and Gravel. And my duties are to test everything that we produce and everything that we sell. So this is the lab and this is where everything happens. I go out in the field, get the samples, and there is a standard from the state of Michigan that we go by. We get a field sample, we quarter it down to a sample size to test. And then I go by all the specifications to make sure that everything passes to be sold. And if we don't meet those qualifications, we make adjustments and I let them know the results and they do the adjustments and then we test it again. A sample of the wash plant. You know, it sifts out your oversize. So then you got your different sizes like three eighths, quarter inch. It uh, goes down to 200 of an inch in the pan. So basically, we, this is how I test everything, individually weigh it, 
and then we have physical properties. So we test it for how much clay is in it, how much water is in it, and how much bad stone, which we call deleterious. That's for like your um, six A that goes in concrete. Um, the chert is it's it'll absorb, so it'll it'll expand and contract. And it keeps doing that, and it's how you get your potholes. So you're only allowed a certain percent. And we make sure it stays under that. And then we just do you know it's, there's several different tests that we run. There's a lot that goes into it. It's more than just a pile of dirt and a pile of stone. As we're coming through the site here, we have an inbound and outbound scales uh, to enable our trucks to get in and out of here quicker. We have what we call a fast pass, which we're driving through here now. This lets our scale attendant as well as our loader operators know um, who's here and what material they're getting for what jobs and it keeps them in order so that we keep loading trucks in order as they arrive. On their license plate on the front, uh, we have a camera that catches it, and then it tells the computer who they are and what product they're here to get. If you were new, most trucks ha have are return customers, but if you were new to the site, when you pull up, there's also a phone, and that gives personal communication with the scale attendant and what product they're getting where she can guide them back the directions to get back there. And as they get close, away from her and they get closer to the product, loader operators pick up from that point on a CB. Let them know exactly where they are. And then maybe double check, you know, you're here for 50 tons to make sure that as a new customer, they didn't make a mistake and, and that we get it right. This site is just under 1,000 acres. Uh, they've been mining in here since since the 40s. Um, we've changed a lot of processes over the years from from the old ways of doing things to newer, more innovative. Uh, just we've learned and gotten better. You know, when we first come into the site, uh, there was a lot of dry mining. But as we get down lower, we've uh, adapted to digging reserves into the water table to create future water bodies for future housing projects. We have uh, a mine development company where they come into our sites, uh, they're part of Levy. They come in and they, they we drill holes throughout the site and then we study and test the material to make sure what the reserve is gonna give us. Uh, we quantify it and then we come up with a plan we're always one year ahead. Our, our next year plan, we're always working on where we're going to go next year uh, because that entails bringing in stripping crews, outside contractors to help us strip the clays or topsoils back and get us down to the good gravels. I imagine these trucks that we see going by take a lot of gravel out of here. I think you said that most of this is used in roads mm -hmm. and some of this is used in, in other things. Would that presume the cement that goes into uh, home construction and business sure. construction? Sure. So, so you're right. The majority of what we sell goes into roads, bridges, highways, etc. Uh, that, that we drive our cars on. But it also goes into major construction projects. So for instance, uh, the GM uh, uh, Factory Zero in, in Lake Orion, a lot of the material from here is going there to produce the concrete uh, that'll make that building uh, and, and parking lots and what have you. Um, and absolutely, we supply the residential market as well, whether it's uh, a material that goes into concrete to make basements or driveways or patios or sidewalks or what have you. Uh, any any concrete or asphalt, we, we've got the right products for them. So once again, Lake Orion and Oxford working together. It's very closely. It's almost emotional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're involved in the community. You're, clearly, you're a, you're a major taxpayer out here. Mm -hmm. You're involved in the community. You're an employer. Uh, 
it seems like community involvement is important to you. Is that true? It, it's absolutely true. We, we view it as our duty and our responsibility and, quite frankly, our privilege to be able to support the communities in which we work and play. Uh, so so they, are, they are our host communities. They are the communities that allow us to do what we do. They absolutely supply our workforce, uh, as you touched on. Um, so, so the schools are always important to us because we see that as our next generation of employees is, is in school today. So we want to make sure that we're exposing students to what we do, to exposing students to the trades and, and job opportunities uh, right near their homes. Uh, and then we work with a whole host of, of local community organizations in all communities. So whether using Oxford as the example, we've got the Oxford Chamber of Commerce we work very close with. Of course, uh, the Oxford School District we work closely with, and then a variety of, of smaller groups, whether it's baseball teams or, or uh, VFWs or the fire hall, we, we like to, to work with, uh, with, our, with our neighbors. So if somebody, if a school group or a Boy Scout group or some leaders said, well, that's a great place, if they called you up, would they be able maybe someday to arrange a, a tour for their kids? Absolutely, absolutely. We would love to, nothing gives us more pride than being able to show kids what we do, and, and kids of all ages. Yes. Um, and, and moreover, we love the opportunity to volunteer. So we, we every year do a whole host of things, whether we're working uh, with Habitat for Humanity or Friends of the Rouge uh, or, or more local uh, organizations. We like for our workforce, our very skilled workforce, to get out there and, and operate equipment or, or or use their, their hands and, and their tools to help give back to the community and help strengthen the communities uh, uh, that, that take such good care of us. Got it. You, clearly you're proud of that. I We're very proud of that. I would be too. Yeah. So Thank you. Speaking of workforce, how many guys work here? We currently have about a, a team about of about 25 people working here. Okay, all guys, I presume. Absolutely not. Really? Abs absolutely. So there are non-guys here too? There are non-guys here, oh. yes. Well, tell so, me about that. I have some daughters who would be very proud to know that. Well, please have them call me because we'll have jobs for them. But uh, but we have two women who are loader operators here. Uh, actually, uh, uh, our most important job, I argue, is the what we call the, the pit digger, the person who is feeding the, the, the raw material into the processing plant. And and uh, it takes uh, a little bit of art and science to get the right blend of materials into the plant. And we've got two women who, uh, who are in that role and they do a phenomenal job. Uh, and we also have our, our whole uh, mine planning team, the, the geologists and the mine planning engineers, uh, is almost exclusively female. Um, and they are wicked smart, incredibly capable, and, and hopefully you'll get to meet them later. And they'll explain what they do and the technologies that they use because they are sharp as a tack and, and really they are the secret sauce that make us who we are. Hello, I'm Danielle Valona. I'm the Senior Mine Planning Engineer for Levy. I'm Kayla DeCicci. I'm the Senior Geologist. I oversee the short and long-term mine planning for all of our aggregate operations as well as uh, the quality control for our ag division. So. Um, our team does everything from data gathering with our drill rig, drilling and testing material um, internally as well as on greenfield sites. Um, we also fly aerial drones to get topographic maps so we can monitor how the ground changes over time. Um, and we keep track of all the inventory for all of our operations. Um, and yeah, reserve analysis, calculations, budgeting, overseeing earth moving projects, just a little bit of everything. Data gathering and um, just supporting our operations. So why is it so much science involved in just digging up gravel and putting it in trucks? That's sort of the general question. You can handle that any way you want to. Yeah, so a lot of the data gathering that goes into it is just to make sure that wherever we're mining, there's good material. We don't want to um, create more waste than we have to, um, and we don't want to disturb more land that we have to unnecessarily. So we just want to make sure that the material that we're going to pull out is quality, that we can make the specification that our customers are looking for, um, and so that you know we can better prepare for the end use of whatever property we're mining. So what's a driller do? So the driller's the... The goal is to get a um, 
a drill log of what material is present, whether, whether we're drilling an exploratory site or a site that we own. Um, so they basically they put augers down into the ground and then they pull them up and then if it's good material they sample it and we send it to our QC lab and they can tell us you know what kind of material that is. Right now um, we're working on a large project back here in these this blue and pink area. Um, our dredge is here, it's kind of hard to see under the topo map, but our dredge is here mining underwater um, and what we're doing in these areas is we are pulling out underwater clays. So with our drilling we found that there's a large clay lens that falls within this red area here and right here. Um, so what we're doing is we're digging down as much as we can from the surface and we're taking out that clay so that um, that area will fill up with water and we can float the dredge over top of it and begin digging that way. So we're trying to save us some time um, for the underwater mining. We're just clearing out the overburden the best we can. And why do you have to get rid of clay? Uh, the clay is basically a waste product for us. Uh, we don't really have any use for it other than for reclamation. Um, so we always strip that off the top of the good sand and gravel and then we place it somewhere on the site where then we can then use it um, at the end of the mine life to reclaim with. So you can see on here, um, this background image is one of our drone images that we, this is a large site, so we stitched them together. Um, and then, so we use the drone to measure these stack piles. We do that monthly. And then we can also use our drone to get um, a topo map. So these lines that are on here, that's giving you the, the exact elevations over the whole property. Um, and that helps us when we're trying to come up with um, volume calculations. So you can tell how much gravel is in a pile with the drone? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? So we, we have um, software that we use, it's called Kespri. We basically, we fly the site and then it uploads and then we trace the piles individually and then we assign a material to that pile and then we can, it spits out a, a tonnage. It's a density calculation. Yeah. So we, through our QC lab, we test each product to get the material density. Um, and then with the pile, we can get the area of the pile and um, it measures in 3D. The drone measures in 3D so we can get a volume more or less and then we assign a density to it and it'll spit out a tonnage. So there's a lot more than just digging dirt here, right? Yes. yes, there's a lot more than just digging dirt. Um, like I said, we try our very, very best to minimize all waste um, if at all possible and we always have kind of the end use in mind so um, what we try to do at all of our operations is mine to reclamation plan um, our second harvest basically. Tell me more about second harvest. What does that mean? So our second harvest is um, basically what what the land will be used for after we're done mining. So we never just want to go in and take all the material out and leave just a big hole. Um, we want to do reclamation. We want to fill it in, um, you know, to potentially develop it based on the community's needs. So um, we operate in a handful of different communities and all of them vary depending on location in what they need and what they desire. Um, so we work with them when we get a mining permit um, to figure out you know, what they are looking for and then we determine our, our mining plan off of that. So it looks like there are opportunities for both boys and girls out in, out in the real world of mining. Is that about right? Yes. Yes, there is. Um, we, we are very few. There's <laughs> yes. not, not as many women as no. there are men, but um, it is improving. Each year we see improvement on the ratio, but um, I like my job. I don't, I don't mind working with guys. It's all good. Yeah. We're used to it. You've got much more than just steam shovels and duck trucks, right? We do. We, we retired the, the steam uh, trucks, or the steam shovels a number of years ago. Really? How sad. <laughs> uh, we use some, some really high-tech equipment now. Uh, we use hybrid front-end loaders. Uh, we use uh, electro, you know, uh, electricity powered dredges. Um, it, you know, we're always looking for the cleanest and most efficient way to do things. Certainly, we still uh, uh, have diesel powered equipment. Uh, you know, we can't always be plugged into the grid, just given what.
what a what a mining operation looks like. Uh, but but we use very clean burning equipment, and uh, and we always go hybrid or electric when it's possible. Uh, and and the technology that goes into these machines is pretty amazing. And our mechanics, you know, oftentimes uh, when there's a when there's a student who's not sure they want to go to college or maybe trade school, and the parents are a little bit hesitant, and and they say, you know, I don't want my kid coming home dirty every day. And we say that's not what our mechanics do anymore. They're on a laptop all day long, and they're plugging into these machines. And and you know when you go to the shop with your vehicle, they're plugging machine, they're plugging computers in and reading diagnostic codes. And sure, they're still getting dirty. They're still using their hands, but it, it takes smart, capable people to work on these advanced machines. Impressive. So, what's this? What's this thing behind us here? It's, a, it's an interesting-looking piece of orange and yellow. <laughs> what's it do? Yeah. So, great question. So. Uh, the start of our of our process for any customer is when they come in, they drive over our truck scale. So right behind us is our truck scale. A truck will come in, we'll weigh them, so we get what's known as their tear weight. So we know what what the vehicle weighs empty. So the truck's coming off a railroad down your driveway and hit hit the scale first to figure out what it weighs when it walks into your place. That's exactly right. Okay. And then once they're on the scale, there's a touch screen up there where they select what products they want. Uh, so if they're here for sand or if they're here for uh, stone or whatever it is, they'll select the product. Uh, and then that information gets sent through the cloud to our front end loader and they have a tablet in the front end loader. Yes. So the front end loader operator, our shipping operator, uh, knows who the truck is, what it'll say on the side of their door and what product they, they want, as well as how many tons. So then we'll load that truck. Uh, uh, based on that information that the loader receives, the truck will come back, he'll go back over the scale uh, where we will weigh them again so we can make sure we gave uh, that truck the proper amount of material, the because proper weight. They're, they're paying by weight. Right? That's right, so that's what I was gonna say. And then we'll print off a ticket that'll say you got 49.75 tons or whatever it is. And that's important for two reasons. It's important to make sure our customers get what they what they want, meaning the right material and the right quantity. And it's also important uh, because we need to protect the roads. So we do not, our, our scales won't even print that ticket if they're overloaded. So if a truck was, was given too much material, they can't get out of here. They can't get their, their ticket, which is how they get paid uh, if they're overloaded. So they'll turn around, they'll dump a little bit off, come back onto the scale, with the appropriate weight, and then they can go out the, the gate. You mentioned roads. That's, that's one question I had. There's an awful lot of trucks going in and out here. Awful is a poor word, but there lots of trucks. Apparently, we need a lot of work in Michigan roads. I, I confirm that. Yes. Um, is there any problem with all these trucks on all these roads? I mean, how do you how do you guys deal with that? Yeah, so so to me, that's one of your trucks, right? Correct. We have we have our own trucks, but the majority of what's going on behind us and in and out of this operation are not our trucks. These are customer trucks, and uh, to me, uh, I really view it as a point of pride. Uh, Oxford historically recognized that the glaciers, when they came through this area, were very generous with their deposit, and they dropped a lot of sand and gravel in the area. And Oxford very smartly um, uh, saw the value of that resource and those minerals, and they set their zoning up in such a way to take advantage of them. Oxford knew that they would play a role in infrastructure and have played a role in infrastructure for 80 plus years uh, uh, with that recognition. So the trucks absolutely need to get loaded and need to get out of here. Uh, so they dr travel through um, uh, M24, which is a, a state trunk line. Mm -hmm. And uh, and something that people often are concerned about is what will it be like if a truck comes through my community? Well, as anyone who lives in Oxford knows, it's a vibrant community. It's full of small shops, restaurants, and, and the trucks, in my opinion, add to the character. They don't detract. The roads are clean. The roads are well maintained and uh, and the trucks travel through there yes but so do countless people on bikes scooters feet uh, as as they go uh, to stores and restaurants so so we, we think it adds or I, I certainly think it adds to the community character I imagine it also adds to the community coffers you probably pay taxes here I imagine we most certainly do yes, we most certainly do all you. sorts of taxes and as an Oxford resident we thank you for your contribution we thank you for having us yes. So at the beginning we ask, what's going on down here? What is this amazing place that nobody understands? By now you should probably have a pretty good idea that they do amazing work taking gravel out of the ground and turning it into things that are used to make roads and foundations and all kinds of amazing things. So the answer to what's going on the other side of that street by Meyer is great stuff for our future. So I hope you enjoyed this interview 
and I hope you stay tuned for Oxford Community Television. Until then, Chuck Cameron, have a good day. So Dan, right now we're in the center of the plant where the material comes up and the processing plants off to the west here. And as you'll notice, the sound, it's, it's like a, a lazy river running, just a, a nice sound.